Hey everyone, it's Nick, and today we are going to be talking about derivatives. So we finally got into the derivatives portion of our calculus series, and derivatives are something that sort of stem off of limits. Actually, they completely stem off of limits. So this is a concept that you definitely will want to make sure you understand. Now, if you don't know how to do limits, that's totally okay, because you can keep watching this video, and I think the limit in this formula here is pretty self-explanatory, which is the definition of a derivative. But still, I would definitely recommend you go back and watch uh, my previous videos on limits if you do not know how to deal with these. So anyways, let's just begin by talking a bit about what a derivative is. So what exactly is a derivative? Well, a derivative can actually easily be defined as the slope of a tangent line, the slope of tangent line. So that basically means if you have a curve of any function and you can draw a tangent line to one point, right there you will have a derivative if you can take the slope of that line. Now just saying that out loud that might sound confusing, so let's try doing it on this graph which I drew over here. So I'm just going to draw a random curve, and I'm just kind of completely making this up. Okay, so let's say we have a random curve like that, and I know it is completely random, but let's say that, and we'll just say that this is at x equals 3. What if I wanted you to take the derivative at x equals 3? Well, all you would do is you go to this point right here on your graph, and you draw a tangent line, a tangent line that touches right at that point. See? And whatever the slope of this tangent line is right here, that's your derivative. And that's all there is to it. So whatever the rise over the run is, and if you remember correctly from pre-calculus, you're going to have this equation right here to get your slope, which is uh, y final minus y initial over x final minus x initial. Now, this is also called something else. This is called a rate of change, a rate of change. So a way you can write this is you can actually change it. So anytime you have something final minus something initial, you can actually change it to just a delta. So this would be delta y, which is changing y over delta x, see, because we have the change here on bottom also, or you could just say this is dy over dx. And this is actually how you define a derivative when you're taking a derivative with respect to x of some function y. So the typical sign for a derivative is d over dx if the derivative is with respect to x. If it's with respect to t, for example, it would be d over dt. If it's with respect to a, for example, it would be d over dA. I think you kind of get the idea with that. And then it, it's going to be and then whatever comes on top here is going to be whatever the derivative is by. So for example, if we have a function y equals 5x plus 2, dy over dx, since we have an x right here, and the function's y, would be the way we would define the derivative of this function. Now, let's go ahead and give this a try. So I went ahead and erased the graph and erased the tangent lines and whatnot, but what I am going to keep is this this definition of a derivative down here. And this is actually a formula, which whenever you, you plug this formula in, it will give you the derivative of any function. Now that might sound easy, but this actually is not the most convenient thing to do. As a matter of fact, you typically don't even use this formula after calculus one. And I'm gonna show you why in a moment here, but let's take a function. Let's say that we have f of x equals five x uh, plus two. Just I think this was actually the function we just, uh, we just uh, put down here. And we're gonna actually try taking the derivative of this using this function right here. This is how you do this in calculus. All you do is take this function and apply it to right here. So if I want to take the derivative of this, and another way you can write the derivative, I forgot to mention this by the way, is f prime. So if you see this little, what looks to be an apostrophe above the function value, that also means you want to take the derivative. So if you ever see that, or if you ever see something kind of like this with some sort of rate of change on the bottom, both of these are equal to the derivative, right? So if you see this little prime symbol, or you see this, this symbol here, these both mean take the derivative. So in this case, we also have to take the derivative. So let's do that using this function over here, this equation, I should say. And let's take this and plug it in here. Well, I can already see we're going to have to plug x plus h in for everywhere that there's x in this function. So let's give that a try. So we're going to have 5, and I see an x right there, so that's going to be 5 times x plus h. See, we just took this, this uh, x plus h over here and we plugged it in there, and that's going to be plus 2. And now you're going to subtract off the entire function value. And we have our function value right here. So we're going to subtract off 5x plus 2. See, that's our function value, all over h. And we're also going to have the limit as h approaches 0. So the limit as h approaches 0. And I can see we're getting kind of cluttered on the board here, so I'm going to change colors just to avoid confusion. So, so now that we have this situation, what else can we do from here? Well, obviously, I think we should simplify. So let's give this a try. So let's take this 5 and let's distribute it into here. So we're going to have 5x plus 5h plus 2 minus 5x uh, plus 2. And actually, there's something that I'm noticing. 
this actually right here, and this was actually a mistake I made, this should all be in parentheses, because remember we took this entire f of x and plugged it in right here. So this this negative sign should actually be distributed to the 5 and to the 2. So rather than being a plus 2, this should actually be a minus 2. So hopefully that makes sense. And what we're now going to do is we're going to take this 2 and this 2, and we can cancel them because one of them is negative and the other one's positive. So we can cancel these 2s. And we can also cancel the negative 5x and the positive 5x. So those will cancel as well. And this is all over h. So we're left with just 5h over h for the limit as h approaches 0. But now you'll notice that we can cancel off the h's. So we are just left with 5. And that actually is the answer. And this right here is the derivative. So this equation up here works every single time. Every single time you have any kind of derivative that you have to take, this equation will work. But why don't we use this equation past calculus 1 if it works every single time? What happened if we had a function like this? Well, let's say we had a similar function for f of x, but instead we had 5 times x to the 10th power plus 3. Let's say we had something like that. Well, let's try doing the same thing we did here. So if we're going to take our derivative, right? And remember, this little prime symbol means derivative. We're going to take this 5, and we're going to plug in this value for x first. This is going to be x plus h to the 10th power plus 3 minus, and then we would have minus our fu entire function. So minus 5x to the 10th plus 3 all over h. Well, now we've got a huge problem because of this value right here. Because you'll notice we can't just take everything and raise it to the 10th power. Remember, this actually breaks a fundamental rule in math. This is one of those situations that people make a mistake on a lot. You do not want to do that whenever you have that. Instead, you actually have to FOIL. And you have to FOIL out this value where you have x plus h times x plus h times x plus h. And this would keep going on over and over and over again for 10 times. And this is just not realistic to try and distribute everything between all the functions and try and get some sort of value. We would most likely make an error if we tried to do that because there's so much math involved. So that is a situation and a reason why we don't typically use this derivative formula after calculus 1. So what can we do here to get an answer for the function? Well, there's something new that we learn about called the power rule. And the power rule looks like this. If you have the derivative of x to the n power, so this, is, this could be any power, this is the derivative of this value right here is going to equal n times x to the n minus 1. So you just take whatever this power is here and bring it to the outside and multiply it by the by the original coefficient right there, or the original value, and then subtract 1 from the exponent. So let's use that same example we just had, 5x to the 10th plus 3. Now let's go ahead and let's take the derivative of this. So let's now use the power rule. So we can just take this 10 and we can bring it to the outside right there. And so, and then when we bring it to the outside, we can subtract 1 from this. So this is going to be 10 times 5x to the 10 minus 1, which is 9, and plus 3. Now, here's something interesting. If you take a derivative of a function and there's a constant by itself, meaning it's not attached to an x variable or a y variable or any kind of variable, as you can see, we just have the 3 by itself. So whenever there's just a constant by itself, whenever taking the derivative, that immediately becomes 0. No constant will be by itself in the situation of a derivative. So all we're going to have in this case is 10 times 5x to the 9th, and then 10 times 5. Well, that's equal to 50. So we have 50x to the 9th. And that right there is the derivative. Now let's go back to that original value we had, which I think was like 5x plus 2, right? 5x plus 2. And let's see if we can use the same power rule on this. Because if you remember correctly, we got 5 by itself once we plugged it into this function here. Well, how can we do this now using just the power rule shortcut that we have up here? And I'm going to write this down just so we don't forget this is called the power rule. Well, that's pretty simple because all you can do is say that this right here, this x right here, is x to the first power, right? That's the same thing as x. Now what we would do is we would take this 1 right here and we would multiply it by the front so we would get 1. And then if we subtract 1 from the top, that would become 0, which means we would have x to the 0, 1x to the 0. Anything raised to the 0 power is going to immediately go to 1. So we could say that this right here just goes to 1, and remember, we have a constant by itself, so this here would go to 0. So if we take the derivative of this entire function right here, we would just end up with 5. And as you can see, that matches with that one up there, which was the same thing we got using this formula right here.